Hello! If you haven't already seen part one, make sure you go ahead and watch that, which I'll link right up here, because this time we're going to break down all the principles that I talked about in the last video, step by step in this video. Now, the first one I did was based on a cooking, baking themed channel. Go ahead and check this one out. What do you think? So for this one, I wanted a classy, elegant, fancy feel to it because obviously when you're cooking, I feel like the first thing you think about is like, I don't know, Gordon Ramsay, elevated cooking, that masterclass type feel. Hence why this led up to the music choice, which was an orchestra, which was made up mostly of the violin, the cello, overall an elegant theme. Number two, this leads to the overall message. What did I want to say or what did I want to portray for this specific channel? And that was, for example, home cooking elevated. So this was my overall header for the channel. And I just wanted to pick some kind of generic name, something like Jane Doe, Moon Knight, same thing. So music choice was the first one. We have our overall message for the second principle. And our third principle was talking about what was your starting and your ending clip. What can you visualize before you even start filming and editing? Now, every time I think about filming a cooking and baking scene, I always really like seeing chefs just throw flour, slow motion, or some kind of seasoning starting from up top. I don't know. For some reason, it's just so satisfying to see them do that. So I wanted to start off by doing the same thing. So I was thinking like, if I start off with this clip throwing flour, why not make the ending clip the end product of what whatever we just made, which in this case was banana bread that my fiance made, which was nice because then I got to control the camera, which is always my favorite part. I love getting full range of using the camera. Now this one's relatively simple instead of my start and ending clip because if I start out with throwing flour and I end with banana bread, then that means everything in the middle is, is relatively simple, right? It's just pretty much the whole process of making banana bread. So let's go ahead and dive into Premiere. Okay, now starting off, it went really simple. All I did was cut clips back to back. So here, cut, 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 cut. So I did one, two, three, four, five cuts, or actually, sorry, six cuts back to back. What I wanted to highlight is where I cut in those specific clips. So if you hear the beat, right? So I'm gonna drag the audio down. Every clip is cut right specifically to the peak of each beat. So what I did first was a, a simple cut. Okay, so this started off one clean cut in slow motion, cut again, and cut again in order to match the beat of the song. So we play that back. Right, so two cello hits, both were cut to these specific clips right here. And then we get into the part where brown sugar is being dumped into the pan. So here I used a speed ramp. So in order to do a speed ramp, you're going to right click on the top left corner of the clip and then go to time remapping and speed. This means you're able to manipulate how fast the clip is going in certain areas. So I wanted it to play just for a second, and then I wanted the dumping of the brown sugar to match with the next part of the beat. So in order to do that, all you have to do is hold on command if you're on a Mac or control if you're on a PC, and then it's going to bring up this little plus icon next to your mouse, which means you can place it on any part of your clip in order to put a keyframe for this speed ramp. So in this case, I placed it right here and only had one because I wanted the rest of the clip to just be at the same speed. You can put two points, which means that this whole pointer here will be sped up. Okay, but then right afterwards, it's going to slow back down to normal speed. I didn't want that in this case. Uh, for this one, I just wanted it to end. That way the act of just dumping the sugar in the pan matches with that specific beat. So in order to do that, all I did was put one point here and then I'm gonna drag this part up all the way to 936%. But I'm bum. That bum, that very last beat, is when the brown sugar just goes straight into. So here, playing it back. See? And then we go into the cello, which is the cut for the next clip here. Okay? So all I did was cut a bunch of clips back to back. I did one time remapping or speed ramp, you know, for that to match the beat here. And then. When I got over here, that's when I reversed this clip, which is why you see the egg going back into its shell. So in order to reverse the clip, all you have to do is right click on the clip, go to speed, and then you click on reverse speed right here. So that will just play your clip in reverse. And then I did the same exact thing with the time remapping. Place two points, raise that bar up. But then what I also do in terms of time remapping, if I'm doing two different points, what helps is if you're doing a speed ramp and you wanna make it smoother, so all you have to do is, um, let's say you want to speed up from right here to right here, okay? 
In order to make it smoother, you're going to drag one point of this time remapping and drag it to the other side. So now you see kind of this slope appearing in the timeline. And then if you click on this marker, see how I can move it to left and right. So this right here makes it more of a rough speed ramp. But then if you want to make it smoother and round out the edges of the time ramp, that's when you can drag this to the right. And it's going to be the opposite if you're doing a clip that is in not reverse speed, right? So a normal clip, then the ramp would go the other direction. But since this is reversed, then the ramp is also reversed. So like, for example, if I go back to this one, if I drag it this way, then you see how the edges are more rounded out going in that direction. And then you can also do the same thing for this other clip here. So I'm going to click on that, drag this out and then move this ramp. So it's a bit smoother, right? When that cello pulls back the, the second beat right here, when I'm highlighting the timeline, that's when the egg pops right back into the shell. One more time. Now, probably the most difficult part of this entire clip is this masking, which I showed you I was going to do in all of them, which I did. Okay. So I'm going to show you right now how to mask properly. So here comes my overall message, home cooking elevated. But now I wanted it to disappear as more flour was pouring into the bowl. So that way it kind of looks like the flour is pouring over the text itself. So in order to do that, first is line up the text. I wanted the text to appear with each consecutive beat. Okay, so that's pretty simple. All I have to do is click on text, just like we did last time, drag it out and then type in home. That's not home. That's definitely not home. Home, and then repeat the same thing for cooking and well, actually um, split up elevated into two words. So I did Ellie and then I did Vated right next to it. So that way all the clips appear consecutively in the timeline, but they will end at one specific point here. So they all show up at different points depending on where the beat is and then it all ends right here. Okay. Now let's talk about the more difficult part, which is the masking. What you do here for the mask is you press alt on your keyboard and you drag the clip up then you will make a copy of that specific clip also in the timeline. So what I did was I made a copy and then I cut it to right about here because this is where I wanted the mask to start. Okay. So now what I did first for the mask is um, I duplicated the bottom clip here, put it up top and then I cut it to right about this point right here. Now in order to start the mask, what I did was I clicked on the pen tool and then I made this shape here according to how kind of like how the flower is falling. So without the bottom clip, if I just show the top clip, this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So my first shape is going to be this one where right when the powder, uh, right when the flower is falling. And then as I go one frame forward, you just adjust all of your masks accordingly. So now see how the shape kind of changed. So now I can change this a little bit here and I can drag this corner out. This part of the text kind of disappears. This little arrow here makes you able to curve the shape if you want to do that. And then you just repeat for each frame. So now more flower appears on this side, which is why I want to start eliminating more text from here. And then when you play it back all together, what you get is. So it looks like as the flower is being poured into the bowl, it also is kind of making the text disappear as well. Moving on to the next one. This one was a simple cut again, focusing on the food. And the last effect I did was also another mask. This time the text was on the cutting board. So that way as the walnuts were falling down the cutting board, it also is dragging the text away. So the text will disappear as the walnuts are falling. And as you can guess, of course, a mask was used here. It would have been better if this text was actually done in After Effects, but I want to focus just on Premiere. So we'll keep it simple. All I did for this one again was click on T highlighted the text. And then I just made keyframes just like we did in the last video for positioning. So that way the text looks like it's moving along with the cutting board. And then I also did rotation to rotate the text clockwise. That way it looks like it's parallel with the cutting board. And then the last thing I did was I clicked on this opacity layer here and clicked on overlay because if it was normal, it would have looked fine too, but I just wanted it to kind of blend in with the cutting board. So that's why I clicked on overlay. So it looks like it's blending in with the cutting board in order to make the mask for this one. It's a little bit different. So the, for this one, I'm not duplicating the clip itself, but rather I'm going to new item here and I'm clicking on adjustment layer in order for you to make a brand new layer here. And that's when you can click on the pen tool 
And my first shape is going to be the first walnut overlaying the text here. And then again, just repeated it. So I just adjusted the shape for each frame as all the walnuts were being dragged down the cutting board. So as you can see here, you make each individual shape until all of the text is completely covered. And then now playing it back, you get, so all text just disappears nicely and clean. And finishing off with the banana bread complete at the end with finally the drum beat that I was talking about. So at the peak of this song, you hear this. All right, so normally it would repeat back because of course the song is way longer than this, but in order to cut off at a very clean point to make it seamless, you want to listen to the amplified peak. So the part where the song gets kind of high. So now normally it would go bum, butter, dum, bum. So that very last beat is where I incorporated a drum or drum hit to signal the end and the start of your video. So if you notice here, the peak of the drum matches along with the peak of the song. And I just cut off the song completely there and then introduced one of my logos. I started getting a brand new logo made. This is actually one of the design ideas. So of course you can incorporate it with putting in your own logo. Now let's watch it back one more time. Pretty simple, right? So all we did was three major techniques. We used cuts, we used speed ramps, and then we used two masks. So relatively simple, straightforward. Okay, so that was for cooking. Now let me show you one I did for a fitness theme channel. So this one is totally different, right? If you're focused on like workouts and different workout routines and fitness overall, then probably music is going to be way more intense. But at the same time, you kind of want a good balance for the music. You don't want something like heavy metal or like hardcore rap yet. Not until at least you get to the workouts themselves because again, this is something that is repeated in every one of your videos. So you want to kind of ease in your audience. This is more of a warm up for your video. Just like how you warm up when you work out in general. Same idea here when you are doing the video. So that was the music overall message strong together. I was thinking of anything that would be motivating for your audience as your message to be portrayed. I was thinking of like either ropes or chains. Come on, like they always look super cinematic. So for this one, I did chains wrapped through a plate and I was thinking like maybe as it was spinning, I can use a mask to reveal and unreveal whatever text I was gonna use in the video clip. Again, another generic name. Tony Stark, I don't know, first thing that came in my head. And then for my final clip, I knew it was gonna go along lines with the overall message. This is the last thing, last thing you want people to see. So maybe I can end off with that message, just rolling over, being tracked over with the ab roller. Music, overall message, start and end clip. Let's get started. So the first one is three separate time remaps, as you can see here. One, two, and three. Again, these are all matching with the peak of the song. Right, it goes boom, 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 boom. So time remap, time remap, time remap, end of clip. So I'll speed up my breakdown this time because you've already seen the same technique used multiple times already. For the text first, Tony Stark, which I just wrote something on the right here. And as a plate starts going over the frame, that's when the text starts, starts disappearing by of course using a mask. So here I just made a little shape, a circle arc shape right here to show that as the weight was spinning around, it's also going to start clearing out the text and of course adjust your shape. So all I did here was to use the adjustment layer instead of duplicating a clip for this one. Now the adjustment layer for mask is generally what I use to incorporate masks instead of duplicating the clip. It just depends on your editing workflow. Okay, so all I did was track this all the way across until it completely disappears. And then we go into the next part, which is a close-up on the weight into another speed ramp. Right, so right when you hear that clap, that's when the clip speeds up and pulls back more. Ignoring my facial expression in this one, let's talk about how I'm diagramming this really quick. So what I'm using that's differently here is a call-out title. I figured for a fitness channel, normally they'd be pointing out different muscle groups and so forth. So call-out titles are very helpful in this case. And 
it's probably something that you would use in a lot of your videos. So to highlight that, I use a call out title. Actually, this one I got from the user Orange83, which he has great tutorials. I'll link his video down below. So if you're interested in the call out title, go ahead and feel free to support his work, of course. So here I was just pretending to talk to a wall, of course, talking about some kind of shoulder workout, pointing out your traps, and then example of the type of exercises you would, that you would be talking about, barbell shrugs. And then it goes into slow motion of the forearm burner and then finishes off with your message, which in this case is strong together. It would be easier to use this text in After Effects. And so all I did was Google font curver and then found one that curves your font, downloaded that as a PNG. PNG is a file that makes your text transparent. So all the background is trans transparent. You won't get like a white rectangle around your font. Drag that into Premiere and then track it with position. That way it looks like it is moving along with the app roller a little bit. And then it disappears matching to the beat. And then the speed ramp indicates the next hit of this final beat here, leading into a drum beat. And this leads into another rendition of my logo. So playing it back, we get this. Okay, so we covered my own intro, we covered cooking, or baking and recovered fitness. The last one was yet another one that was suggested from Instagram. If you're not following me already on Instagram, make sure you go ahead and check that out because I ask for your opinions and insights on what stuff to vote on, new videos, etc. One person suggested that I do yo-yos. So I was like, okay, this would be a fun little challenge. I haven't played it with yo-yos since I was like little. Back then I know I had the little Duncan yo-yo that my dad bought me, but I bought a brand new yo-yo for this specific video and learned it a little bit. Obviously, in no way, shape, or form am I a master at yo-yos, but I just wanted to give a general gist of what you can do if you have a specific hobby and just give you a different perspective on making an intro. So for the last and final one, before I break it down, go ahead and check it out. Again, completely different from the other two. Right? So we have that classy, elegant feel from baking. We have uh, the upbeat, motivational, get ready to work out for the fitness one. And then this one is like more of a playful, lighthearted theme, more like a family theme, right? Because it's a hobby, something fun, something you enjoy. So I figured why not give you another perspective so you can see how all these principles are being incorporated. First off, music, playful, lighthearted, joyous, happy, happy-go-lucky. That's the tone I was going for for this one. Start off with the freaking instant joke. Obviously, this is a 100% real certificate of me entering a yo-yo championship. In case you're wondering, yes, that was written in crayon. So of course, I've chose a song that mirrored those playful, lighthearted emotions. Secondly was the overall message. This time, like I said before, it's okay if you don't want to include any kind of message, which I didn't in this one at all. Especially since I figured this channel is all about yo-yos. If everything is about one specific item, one specific hobby, then there's not really a need to portray a message. Just to show you more of the options that you can explore, this time it was all visual other than the name reveal at the end. And if you count my certificate that I wrote in crayon, I guess that would also be text. Starting clip, obviously I wanted to start off with a stupid joke. And then the ending I thought would be cool instead of fading out to black this time, maybe just have a yo-yo just roll across the screen revealing the name of the channel. With that in mind, let's dive into Premiere one last time. So I started off first with a long 24 FPS clip, which means it's in regular speed. First hit signals a change in the clip. All I did was I cut, was a simple cut, cut, cut. And what's different here is I actually planned a specific transition to do while I was filming. And that was a black to black transition. So this part, I speed ramped into a part of the clip where it was just all black which means that the start of the next clip would also be in all black, so it looks more seamless. So one time remap, sped that up until you see in all black, and then we dive into the next part, which goes from black to the yo-yo spinning. So I sped that up as well. So it looks like this in the end, right? So I threw the yo-yo up, it looks like as I came back down, it started spinning. 
And then I figured since you're doing a yo-yo channel, of course, you're going to be talking about different techniques and maybe how to wind up the yo-yo, how to tie it in, how to just work with the string. So I wanted to incorporate some of that. So those, that was a simple cut to another cut, a highlight of like the yo-yo and then the yo-yo spinning on its own. This one, um, I know I said I didn't include text earlier, but this one, I just figured it's like an older clip you used. Maybe in one of the videos that you've done, you're talking about specific techniques in the yo-yo. So I learned how to rock the baby and I show you here, rock baby, including with some motion graphics text. And here's what I wanted to focus on. So the text reveal, again, is very similar to how we use the plates in the fitness one and also similar to of course the cooking one when we did it with the flour and the cutting board in this case for the yo-yo as it is spinning away it's revealing text so all i did here was type in steve rogers get where i'm going here with the whole theme of names and then instead of using the pen tool this time in order to save time i used a circle and then just adjusted the circle to match the yo-yo so now the reveal is a little bit different in that you have to click on inverted because now the reveal is reversed. Instead of the text disappearing, the text is being revealed, which means my layer is now going to be inverted because this is what normally what it would look like. So if we click on inverted, now you just have part of the S being revealed. And then as you go into the next frame, when the yo-yo is rolling, that's when you, of course, you are adjusting your circle to match where the yo-yo is in terms of position until it finally disappears completely. And then from there, it doesn't really matter where your mask is. Playing it back, we get. So instead of this time, no logo, no text really, other than the name of the channel. And instead of fading to black for the drum beat this time, this time the final clip, instead of just a black screen, it's a yo-yo revealing the name of the channel. Okay, so now hopefully you have a better idea of how you can construct and make your own intro for your channel. All these intros I filmed and edited in one day. So ideally you would want to use clips from videos across your entire channel. That way it gives more variety to your channel. So for example, for the cooking one, if you have like different dishes you've made or if you worked in different kitchens or maybe you went camping one day and then cooked there, all those would look really nice in your intro. That way it shows people, these are all dishes that I can make. For fitness, you see how I use the call out titles, again, linked below. So those are great for diagramming different muscle groups that you talk about across most of your videos. I would also maybe include like different workout routines. So if you have like a suggestion for different muscle groups and you have all these kind of texts and different motion graphics, those would look really nice to put in your intro. Maybe clips of you talking about different protein shakes that you review would be good. Meal prep. If that's your thing, would be great to include as well. And of course, better clips of you working out instead of me working out on my carpet. I'm sure you have tons of better ways than I did to showcase your work. And for yo-yos, my suggestion for that would be, let's say you went into different competitions for hobbies like that. Those would look really nice to show that you're an expert in the field. Maybe different ways to train your hands to manipulate the string would be really nice to include in your intro. Maybe you review different kinds of yo-yos in terms of like the metal, the different finishes, the colors, or if you're talking about different yo-yo strings, all the fabrics and different materials involved in that, those would also be really, really good to include in your intro as well. Now with that, I packed a ton of information in the past two videos. I hope you found all of it helpful. That way you can make the best and unique and interesting and cool custom intros for your own channel. If you found these videos helpful, of course, tag me in all your social media platforms. I would love to see what you made with them. But until then, I'll see you all very soon.